So welcome friends. Today's topic is significance of fabric properties in design. I hope most of you have already studied fabric production techniques and the properties of the fabric also. Then we will now see ki how the different fabric properties are relevant from the design point of view. Now here the very first slide gives you an, an idea about the way the fabrics can be classified. According to structure, it can be classified as woven fabrics, knitted fabrics, braided fabrics, non-woven fabrics and a combination. So, you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 types of fabrics. Then in non-woven, we can have biaxial and triaxial. In knitted, we can have warp knitted and web knitted. Braided, we can have tubular braid or flat braid. non oven we can have bonded and felted type. And in combinations, we can have stitched, bonded, laminated. So, therefore, the fabrics are also too many in front of us. And whenever we think of a specific product, we will also the question that will come to our mind is which fabric to be chosen. And hence we need to know little details about the properties of these fabrics, so that our selection criteria or our selection process does not go wrong. Here is another classification based on dimensions. We have 2 D fabrics, we have 3 D fabrics and we have 2.5 D fabrics. 2 D fabrics woven, knitted, braided, non-woven. 3 D fabrics could be again woven, knitted, braided, non-woven and 2.5 D fabrics as an example could be carpet, towel, these are called 2.5 D. So, these are the two ways in which fabrics are classified. Now, what are the basic parameters of a fabric? For open fabric, first important parameter is the material. It is made of which material? Is it cotton or polyester or rayon or silk or wool? So, material is one of the important parameter. Then comes type of weave. What is the type of weave that has been used to make the fabrics? Then what is the thread density? What is that is EPI, ends per inch and picks per inch. What is the fabric weight that is or aerial density expressed in terms of GSM that is gram per square meter? What is the fabric width Then thickness? cream, cover factor, these are all basically fabric parameters. So, now our design comes, we have to actually give the details that is this fabric should be made from this material, this should be type of weave, this should be EPI, PPI, this is the GSM that we need and this kind of thickness is required, and this should be the cover factor. So, these are all part of the detailed design. For knitted fabric similarly, material, type of construction, fabric weight that is aerial density, width, thickness, stitch length, stitch density, tightness factor. And for non-open fabrics, it is again material, fabric weight, fabric width, thickness, porosity. So, typically these are the fabric parameters. From there, we move on to the next slide, just to understand very basics of characteristics of woven fabrics. So, we have woven fabrics, we have knitted fabrics, then we have braided fabrics, we have non-woven fabrics and we may have compound fabrics also. 
Now let us look at the oven fabrics. We are all familiar with oven fabrics. Okay. Now the there is a picture on the right hand side. It is very clear that this is a plain oven fabric. Now generally in the oven fabrics the yarns are orthogonal to each other. We have two set of yarns, so we all know that these fabrics are very strong generally. Open fabrics are strong fabrics, then they have high initial modulus. Tensile modulus generally more than shear modulus. They are less stretchable, they are less deformable, they are dimensionally stable and generally they have a smooth plane surface and the fabrics are durable. In, this is all in comparison to the other mode of fabric productions that is in comparison to knitted fabrics or non oven fabrics. From there we go little details about the woven fabrics now. <coughs> now in this table what we find that there are different types of weave and you are all familiar with that we have so many types of interlacement patterns and we get create different type of fabric architecture. It all depends the way the two set of threads are interlacing each other. So, we have plain weave one by one that is one up one down we all know interlacing patterns warps are interlacing the weft yarns. General character of the fabrics are stated in the here maximum number of interlacement you will find in the plain open fabrics. It has a higher shear rigidity, strong and stable structure, balanced or it could be unbalanced. It wrinkles most, it is sleazy, if set is low, it is less absorbent with respect to liquid absorption. Typical example is voile, sari, sharting, it could be dhoti and there are many more where plain open fabrics are used. Then comes basket weave and we have so many types of basket weaves. The typical diagram is given here. Here are two or more yarns in either warp or weft or both could be there and they are woven as one in a plain weave pattern. So, we the interlacement pattern is, is basically plain weave. The structure characteristics is, is balanced, interlacement pattern is less in comparison to plain weave, then the interlacement pattern is basically plain weave pattern. It looks flat, it is more absorbent, it wrinkles less, it is good drapeability and it has a greater resistance to tearing. Sometimes we may need a fabric which will give us better tearing resistance and in that case a basket weave is better than a plain weave. So, these are weaved in suits, sail cloths, shortings, these are the typical applications and then may be many more. Then comes twill weave, you are also familiar with warp or weft yarns float over two or more yarns from the opposite directions in a regular progression to the right or left. So, we have 2 by 1 twill, 2 by 2 twill, 3 by 1 twill like that and what we create a diagonal lines. You see here in the diagram we are creating diagonal lines like this, fewer interlacement patterns in this case it wrinkles less, is strong and firm structures, more pliable, can have higher set and it is durable also. Typical products are denim, gabardine, herringbone, suits, coats, these are typical applications. Then comes satin weave, we have, it can have warp and weft yarns, they float over four or more yarns from the opposite direction. See here we have, if you see the image we see that long floats are there. That means the total number of interlacement patterns or interlacements per unit area 
will be much less in this case. So, it generally creates a flat surface because it has long floats. In this diagram, it shows long webbed floats. So, a surface being flat, it is very, very lustrous. The fabric is smooth, can have very high set also and long floats leading to possibility of slippage and snagging. That is the negative point, you can say of this particular type of fabrics, but it gives a luxurious appeal and is generally used for making upholstery. So, these are the typical type of weave which are used. The other weave is a honeycomb weave. Honeycomb weave cast texture seeds, it resembles cellular structure of bees honeycomb. The typical diagram is shown here is a little three dimensional effect is there in this honeycomb weave. It can trap air and generally is used for making blankets or towel. Then comes triaxial fabrics. So, previously whatever we have discussed they are all biaxial. So, we have two set of yarns, we call them warp and webbed. Now, here we have three set of yarns and this is how the yarns are, if you look at this diagram, we have blue yarns, there are green yarns and then there are some yarns which are little reddish in color. You can say brown color type of yarn. So, these are the three sets of yarns which are there are two set of warp yarns are inserted at 60 degrees to the weft and in tetraxial fabrics four sets of yarns are inclined at 45 degree to each other that is also there. So, these three sets of yarn form equilateral triangles and the fabric is open with diamond shape at the center. If you look at the holes that you see here, they have a, you can see how many types these holes are looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this looks like a, like say hexagon type of you no know, um, holes which are created between the yarns. So, that is uh, the triaxial fabrics for us and the fabrics are stronger than rectangular oven fabrics. The advantage that we get that is the steer and bursting resistance is superior to plain oven fabrics. So, if you want to resist steer, so where the fabric is likely to fail because of tear, this is the right weave that we have to use. So, for many technical products, triaxial fabrics are very much in use. Shear resistance is also very high because intersections are locked. At every intersection there are three yarns are passing over each other. So, every intersection gets locked. So, it is difficult to shear that is the another interesting property of the triaxial fabrics and they are used where? They are used in sail cloth tire fabrics, balloon fabrics and other laminated structures which are used for different types of technical applications. From there we go to the next slide. Here there is a comparison of cover factor and their adjustment. So, plain weave if the cover factor is plain weave let us say if it is considered to be 1 the cover factor, then 2 by 2 weft rib will be 0 0.92 times of whatever was the value for plain weave. 1 by upon 2 or 2 upon 1 twills will be 0 0.87, the adjustment factor is going to be 0 0.87, for 2 by 2 mat is going to be 0 0.82 and for these twills that is 1 upon 3, 3 upon 1 is going to 0 0.77, for upsetting 
is going to be 0 0.69. So, a cover factor of a plane weave is whatever this is 1. The adjusted cover factors for the rib, twill, mat weaves are stated here. We have to multiply them by this factors to get the maybe typical cover factor of those these fabrics provided other parameters are same. So, this little gives a little bit of tightness that we can expect in a fabric. So, you can say the plane wind fabrics will be very very tight. The others whether it is twill or rib or mat or satin their tightness factor is going to reduce they will be less and less tight. Typical characteristics of fabrics are shown here, this may be different also, but some typical values are given here to give an idea. Width of a fabric can be from 91 to 406 centimeter, that is it could be almost point 1 meter to almost 4 meter roughly you can say that could be the width for normal fabrics and also we can have fabrics where the width is little low, less that is almost 0 0.9 to 1.5 meter that is mostly available commercially this is the type of fabric which are available. Then width of narrow fabric is around 30.5 centimeter. So, we have fabrics which are commercially available three different width 30.5 centimeter or it could be 91 to 152 centimeter or it could be 91 to 406 centimeter these are typically available. Fabric weight or aerial densities for lightweight fabric it is 68 to 102 grams per meter square for heavy fabric it is 173 to 242 gram per meter square. Cover factor details are given here actually that is total cover factor may typically anything between 23 to 26, warp cover factor 20 to 22, weight cover factor may be 12 to 16. So, that is the range in which cover factors of normal fabrics will lie and the cream value is also may vary from fabric to fabric, but to get an idea the warp cream is could be anything between 2 to 6 percent and the web cream could be 6 to 8 percent. These are some typical values, the it may differ also depending upon the type of fabric, type of yarn that has been used to make those fabrics. So, to just get to get an idea that what are the typical characteristics of the fabric? Some values are quoted here. Then here there is a you know, qualitative comparison between certain fabric parameters with the different types of fabric construction that we have seen just now. We can have plain woven fabric, twill woven fabric, satin fabric, basket weave woven, and lino is another type of weave which I have not discussed, but is another type of weave which could be there. And, and if I compare the stability of these fabrics in terms of or in terms of drape or porosity or smoothness, balance, symmetrical or not, whether crimp is low or not. Then the qualitative comparative current presence is given here, where A stands for average, G stands for good, E stands for excellent and V P stands for very poor. So, like take any you know like let us say let us take the value of stability. Structurally, which one is very stable? Plain weave, woven fabrics is very stable, they do not distort much. Lino is also very stable, they do not distort. The yarns are basically held in position in lino weave, so they do not move much. 
where twill is average in terms of stability, structural stability and satin and basket, these open fabrics, the stability of the yarns within the structure is less. That is, they can easily move and therefore, the structure can get distorted easily. That is what stability means. Such kind of comparative you know, uh, statements about the properties of fabrics can help the designer in choosing which type of weave he or she has to select for a given applications. So, depending upon the nature of the application, we have to decide when you go for detailed designing that which type of weave we should choose. So, keeping in mind the various properties of the fabrics in terms of stability, drape, porosity, balance, symmetricity or crimp, we can decide which particular weave we should choose. So, this side is basically we can say parameters or characteristics of the fabric and these are a relative assessment about these different types of weaves which are there. Now, after open fabrics we go to the another type of fabrics called we know them the knitted fabrics. We are all familiar with knitted fabrics. We have web knit and we have warp knitted fabrics and the two diagrams are shown here web knits and warp knits. In web knits the loops of one row of fabric is made from the same yarn. Some structures are known as plain, rib, interlock, pearl like that. So, one row is made from the same yarn like this row as shown by the dock line, they are made from the one yarn. So, one whale is made from one particular yarn, the next row is made from another yarn. So, every row is representing a yarn from a specific cone the neighboring rows are made from the yarns from other cones. In the warp knit, in comparison to web knit, the warp knits each loop is made from different warp yarn, each loop is made from different warp yarns. Neighboring loops of one course is made from the same yarn. That is how you can see the yarn path is shown here, this is made from one yarn. So, these loops vertically if you look at it, they are made from one particular type of yarn. Here the horizontal direction the yarn is moving and it is coming from one particular cone. So, this is how the two types of fabrics are there knitted fabrics and uh, both warp knit and web and web knits. And in the case of warp knit, there could be two types tricot and wrestle, depending upon the type of machine that is used to produce them. Now, typical characteristics you need to know uh, warp knitted fabrics, these are multi layer and generally fall between oval and web knitted fabrics. Warp knitted fabrics with laid in yarns are similar to woven fabrics in their mechanical properties. Web knitted fabrics yarns are looped around each other, knitted fabrics are more isotropic than woven fabrics. Tensile shear and bending moduli are all of same order, these are very low modulus. So, initial modulus of the fabric is very, very low, it can extend easily. Fabrics are generally weak in nature, it is stretchable fabrics we can produce and loops can easily deform, it does not need any ironing, there is the advantage. So, some products where ironing is not required at all, we generally go for knitting. Then it has a very soft handle, you see all interior or inner garments are made from knitted products because 
the loops can deform easily and therefore, they are generally fabrics as a whole becomes very soft, it is compressible. So, that is the advantage of wept knitted fabrics, this appears on the left hand side we see the warp knitted fabrics. So, if we go for a comparison of web knitted structure, because then the within web knitting also there are many structures. We have plain, rib, pearl, interlock, these are the four structures which has been taken for a, as a, you know, a comparison, because if we decide that we have to go for a knitted fabric, the immediate question will come which type of structure we should choose or which one will particularly suit a specific application or we want to whatever we were trying to design for that particular you know, design which particular type of meter structure will be the best. And therefore, some comparative statement about the different type of structures and their characteristics will be very helpful. So, appearance wise the comparisons are given here, difference on face and back, V shape on face and arc on back, this is typically appearance wise, rib same on both sides, pearl same on both sides, interlock same on both sides. So, interlock pearl and rib fabrics will look exactly similar whether I see the face side or back side, or as the plane of fabrics will look different in the face and the back side. Extension wise you see pearl gives you very high extension, so if high extension is required pearl structure is the best, whereas the other structures gives you moderate extension length wise directions. And in width wise directions pearl will give you very high extension. So, pearl gives you high extension both in, in the length wise and width wise directions, whereas plane wheel will give you high extension 30 to 50 percent in width wise directions, much higher in the case of rib and interlock it is just moderate. Therefore, depending upon the type of extension we required, we can choose a particular type of structure. And uh, area wise then you know, extensions are given here, so where very high extensions are required in some products we can go for pearl. An example maybe let us say sportsman's product, uh, any uniform that you want to make which is you know is basically skin tight of garments for sports men with high activity sports a lot of you know, running around a lot of movement and therefore, a stretchable fabric is very much desired there. So, a pearl type of structure may help. The other comparisons are in terms of thickness and warmth, unroving capability, curling tendency, end use, some end use are also stated here. So, you can see that thickness wise also someone looks much thicker and thicker the fabric warmer it will be. So, some thick fabrics are always warmer, so interlock is thicker, pearl is thicker, plane is also thicker, rib is much thicker than the others. So, here so these comparisons of the various properties is going to help us in choosing the right type of fabric. So, if you look at the use of web net typically, the apparel use are sweaters, t-shirts, golf shirts, sweat, exercise suits, figure hanging garments. So, these are the typical apparel use, medical applications are also listed here, technical applications also given here. Property wise are easy care, resilient, soft, warm, in steel air environment allows freedom of the body movement. In steel air it is warm, 
otherwise an intermediate structure is quite porous and therefore if wind is blowing then the wind can easily penetrate so therefore in still air it is very warm but if the air is not still but moving in that case the cold air can easily penetrate the structure and can go inside the what can, can go near to the skin in the warp net as already discussed or that there could be two types tricord and rachel these are two types of warp knitted fabrics which are available and uh, they are also used depending upon the type of machines these names have been given cast x6 are tricot fine vertical wells on the surface and crosswise ribs on the back rachel gives you less like open constructions with heavy textured yarns held in place by fine yarns typical structures are shown here here for rachel and this is for tricot the use is for outerwear underwear blouses bed sheets pillow these are the various types of use of tricot and the other one is rachel that design is also shown here and it is used for carpets fine delicate laces the rachel type of warp knitting machines are used so this is how the fabrics will differ from each other so what is the difference between woven and knitted fabrics if you now compare firmness wise woven fabrics is always much more firmer knitted fabrics are not firm stretchability woven fabrics are not stretchable unless we insert you know some elastic yarn otherwise woven fabrics will not be very stretchable if the yarns are stretchable as if you lycra yarns while making the fabric then it is different otherwise stretchability of woven construction will be always less than knitted constructions drape wise it is poor than knits or knitted products are better in terms of drape abrasion resistance against abrasion resistance of generally of knitted fabrics are certainly better than woven fabrics because the fabrics are mobile in nature so as we are braided by a braider the yarns can easily move and thereby it can reduce the stress that is generated by the braider and because of that mobility which is there in the knitted structure the abrasion resistance of the knitted fabrics will be expected to be better provided the yarns are exactly similar in nature snagging tendency for woven fabrics is always much less here knitted fabrics so you know, the snagging tendency is more because the structure is loose therefore snag resistance is poor peeling less than knits in woven knitted fabrics can peel very easily why because generally in the yarns we put less amount of twist and therefore the fibers from the surface of the yarns or fabric surface can easily come out and then they can get entangled and once they get entangled the surface fibers they form peels so peeling in open fabrics will be less because the yarn gets support at numerous you no know, interlacement points so the tendency of a fiber to move out from the body of the yarn will be much less thermal insulation knitted fabrics will give you better insulations because the knitted loops are three dimensional in nature and the fabric thickness is always much more that's why knitted fabrics are better in terms of thermal insulations so these are the comparisons between the two types of fabrics the lino weave as we have we have no, we are discussing about lino now in this particular slide we see the way the 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 the, uh, no, the image gives an idea about the way the yarns are interlacing each other and 
you look at the structure. Now, these yarns you see that going like this. So, there this pair of yarns is actually holding this yarn between them. This webbed yarn is actually held in position by the two lino yarns and therefore, it is not going to move easily. So, linos adjoining warp ends do not remain parallel when they interlaced with web, but cross each other. So, this is where it is crossing each other, these two yarns are crossing each other and therefore, the web yarn remains trapped and hence they cannot move. They are with relative to each other, they will not. So, relative movement of the web yarns will be almost frozen, they will not be able to move because they are gripped by the warp yarns. And since these two yarns are crossing each other, these are used to produce open structure. When you need to produce very open structure, as shown it here. If we make the structure from normal plain weave fabrics, then we find the warp and web yarns are actually moving relative to each other and the structure as a whole is not stable. But many a times we need a stable structure, but at the same time the structure has to be stable also. Sorry, we need open structure and the structure has to be stable as well. Now, if we want to open structure and stability then lino is the answer and there are instances especially in technical applications where such kind of structures are required. Stable open structure is required and there lino weave will be of great advantage. Other fabric types are just like felted fabrics are there through milling and brushing during finishing with combination of heat, pressure and friction, thick dense fabrics will give you a felted appearance. So, dense fabric with felted appearance is produced that do not fray easily. Generally, they are produced from wool fibers. So, you can feel because the wool fibers have scales. So, normal woolen fabric maybe it is a plain weave fabric or twill weave fabric or maybe certain weave fabric whatever fabric we produce then those woolen fabrics are now felted by the this process and we create such kind of structures where once it is felted we will not be able to make it out whether it is made from you know, originally it was in a plain open fabric or not. The next is the pile fabrics, you look at this cut pile fabrics as a velvet absorb light and can also have great thickness, greater thickness that imparts luxurious look. So, this is a typical pile fabrics. So, example of pile fabrics could be there in towels also a type of pile fabrics and uh, we can also think of carpet piles are also there. Then we have stretch fabrics, nowadays the lycra stretch fabrics are very, very popular. So, the stretch is imparted during finishing, it may, may be inherent in the fabric type or to be added through use of stretch yarn. So, we can give this that is we can introduce stretch yarn during the fabric production process and therefore, we can make a fabric which is very, very stretchable and transparent fabrics also sometimes are required is very, very it is a fabric with very, very low GSM and the fibers are also very thin. So, organza, organdi are examples of semi transparent crisp fabrics. Softer fabric in this category are chiffons, georget, crepe. These are the type of fabrics which are transparent in nature where transparent look is something which is desirable and therefore, we make it from very fine synthetic fibers. Three D fabrics 
if we go by dimension wise, as said, oven, knitted, braided, and non oven, all are we can have 3D fabrics, we can produce them using these technologies that is, oven fabric manufacturing technology or knitted or braided or non oven. And in this case, warp and weft yarns are bound together by a series of binder yarns. So, you may have been taught in fabric production course the way we produce 3D open fabrics or knitted 3D fabrics. Like special fabrics is an example of 3D knitted fabrics. Comparison between 3D and 2D, absence of interlacing between warp and weft allows 3D fabrics to bend and internally shear easily without in plane buckling. That is the very important point here and presence of jet direction thread makes a dramatic improvement in the transverse strength and impact strength also. That is what we get in 3D fabrics. In 2D fabric could be very strong in the x y plane, but when it goes to z directions, if we have a layer of 2D fabrics and make it thicker, then strength in z direction is not going to be very, uh, very good. And therefore, we need to produce a 3D structure where we have yarns also running in the z directions other than x and y, we should also have yarn in the z direction. Then the fabric as a whole will also have lot of strength in the transverse directions. And as a result what happens? They are less prone to delaminations as is found in layered 2D fabric structure. So, if we make a sandwich structure of 2D fabrics like one after the other I place them and make a thick structures. Let us say there are 10 fabrics, 2D fabrics, place one on the top of the other and I make a thicker structure. The problem is how to join 10 layers and whatever techniques that we can use to join the 10 layers, there is a chance of delaminations. And that is one of the greatest weakness for the fabrics. There is a lamination problem. They easily delaminate. Whenever a, some forces acts on it, some impact energy acts on it, that is a problem. And therefore, we are going for actual real 3D structures, not by no, sandwiching several 2D fabrics. This gives you a little bit of comparison of the different types of structures, 3D open structure, 3D knitted structures, 3D barrier structures and 3D stitched fabrics. Open structure 3D complex near net shape of reforms properties can be tailored for specific applications. 3D knitted structures are better for mobility, 3D better structure complex shapes can be produced also if you have a 3D braiding machine. And the other thing is composite with complex geometry is less expensive to produce. So, 3D structures we can produce a lot of composites nowadays when you go for making composite fabrics, 3D open structures can be used they have a better delamination property. So, that means the layers will not separate from each other easily. Higher interlaminar fracture toughness is there. 3D knitted can produce near net shape to form sandwich composites have lower specific density. Some structures have higher impact damage tolerance and energy absorptions. 3D it is structure also are available nowadays. We can make on warp knitting machines 3D structures. Similarly, we have 3D better structure also. So, different types of 
production techniques and therefore the type of structure that is produced all are basically 3D structures, but the properties of the structures are different depending upon which particular type of production technique has been used to produce them. Some 3D fabrics, some images are shown here. You can see this is a spacer fabric. So, these vertical yarns are basically we call them spacer yarns. So, there are specific application of such kind of fabrics also. You see beautiful 3D fabrics here and there are holes here. So, you can create some very complex structures for different types of end use. From there, we go to the compound fabrics now. Now, here compound fabrics means is a combination of two types of two types of fabrics made from two different technologies. Basic fabric structure can be combined in different ways to produce compound fabrics. Quilted fabrics, one example. We can have tufted fabrics, flock fabrics, coated fabrics, laminated fabrics, all are basically different types of compound fabrics. In a quilted fabrics, what it is there? There are two sheets, and in between the sheets, we have a lot of fibers, loose fibers which are there, and then we stitch them and produce what is quilted fabrics. And quilted fabrics are used as comforters or other applications are there, and in let us say for extreme cold weather garments, if you want to produce, we have to go for quilted type of fabric there so that we can uh, create a lot of insulation in the fabric. So, there are different types of you know, techniques which are there to produce quilted fabrics. So, here there is a fibers are flocking on a typical surface of the fabrics which could be woven and then here there are vertical vertically you know, laid fibers and we get a fabric which is called flag fabrics. So, velvet fabrics which we find is typically an example of is an example of flock fabrics. So, here the descriptions are given about these types of fabrics. Quilted fabric, fabric constrictions of a filler material sandwiched between two fabrics. Tufted fabrics, fabrics which have a yarn pile inserted into backing fabric. Flock fabrics, fabrics which have flock attached to base fabric usually by an adhesive. Coated fabrics, fabrics which have had a layer or layers of coating applied and then come laminated fabrics. So, there is a so many types of fabrics are there which can be used. Now, we come to the non woven fabrics also. This is another technology to produce a two dimensional sheet or a three dimensional sheet depending upon the type of you know, thickness or GSM we require. So, non woven fabrics. These are the production techniques, dry laid, wet laid, spawn laid, spawn bonded, melt blown and electro spun. These are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different types of non open fabrics depending upon what kind of technology is used to produce them. Generally in the fabric manufacturing courses, this will be taught in more details. We need to know general, have a, we should have some simple no a general idea especially the characteristics of these fabrics and what are the possible use as of now so that if this understanding is there it is going to help us whenever we want to choose a certain type of fabric we with the question comes to our mind that i have to choose a fabric then these are the various alternatives that will be there in front of us and with you know a lot of brainstorming, we can decide if which type of fabric we should choose. Now, let us say dry laid fabrics, carding or aerodynamically it can be produced. 
fiber orientation in either machine direction or crosswise or randomly oriented. That is the characteristics. And the bonding is done through needle points. So, there are needles which are punched or it can be hydro entangled also or it could be stitch bonding is possible, thermal bonding is possible and chemical bonding by resin is also possible because the fibers are in loose to start with. Now, how to hold the fibers together? So, that fabric has got certain strength and these are the various ways to create bonds between the fibers as they lie within the fabric and uses interlinings, coated fabrics, backing, carpet components, wipes like that. And the other one is weight lead. In the weight lead, it is made generally from very short fibers, 6 millimeter fibers. It is used for making paper makers felt generally. So, high uniformity and random arrangement of fibers that we get here made from wood pulp, natural fibers, polyester, nylon, glass, all sort of fibers can be used and wet lead. And the use is laminating, coating, base fabric, filters, insulation, roofing. There are so many types of use of wet lead fabrics. If you read some books where th these fabrics details about these fabrics are stated, production techniques, the properties, their end use. These details will be available in some textbooks. And then comes spun lead, mail blown, electro spun, so many different techniques are there. And whatever techniques that is used, it gives us a fabric which are all known over in a way, but the characteristics are different, the properties therefore become different. Spun lead or spun bonded, orientation of fibers can be varied, higher strength and tear resistance that we get. Fibers that can be used are polyester, nylon, polyethylene. So, we need only thermoplastic fibers for this. There is no need of additional resin to hold the fibers together. Melt blown, the wave consists of very fine filaments having diameter 1 to 4 micron. So, melt blown, this type of non opens, if only want very low GSM non opens, very, very thin GSM non opens, melt blown is the way. Sometimes we need GSM of just 50, 40, 30 GSM I need, but we have to make from very fine fibers. So, melt blown non open is the answer for that. For most of the face mask, the fabric layer which is inside is made from mill blown techniques. We have very fine fibers and we have a very thin fabrics. So, when this combination is required, I need a very thin low GSM fabrics, but I need very very, very you know small pore size in micron level pore size are required, then melt blown technique is the answer. Then we have electro spun technique also there and we can also produce non open following electro spun techniques. With this, this particular lecture is over now. So, what we have discussed different types of fabrics that are available with us, their general characteristics and if we know that these are the various types of fabrics which are there and these are the general characteristics, then again is going to help us to decide, to choose for a given applications. With this, we close this session. Thank you.